All right, for our second exercise, I just want to give you a, um, a quick introduction to vector imaging. And if you remember from our, our slides on an introduction to digital art and the, the basic techniques, compositing is the first. The second is vector shape use for things like logos, for things like t-shirt designs, and for things like type design and emojis. A way to think of vectors is that they're cutouts of paper. In their most basic form, they're just cutouts of solid paper. And so we're going to be using basic shapes, basic um, flat two-dimensional solid color vector shapes, squares, circles, ovals, triangles, rounded rectangles. These are some of the, the components that we'll modify from. To do this, we're going to customize our own emoji design. And comp conceptually, we're going to base it on that same band book that you chose for your composite. So you're not just creating any random emoji. You're going to try to create an emoji that will work with your band book. I'm not going to say that it, it needs to cover every aspect of your band book, you know, all the complexity. But it could be one that you think fits a dominant emotion of that book. So let's look into it. You've already picked your band books. It's okay with me if you wanted to choose a different one, you know, to explore for the emoji than you did for your first exercise. But as long as you have a book title that goes with it, that works for the concept part of this project. So I'm going to stick with the hate you give in this example. And now we're going to use a, a program, much like we use Google AutoDraw, we're going to use this kind of weird <laughs> site, which allows us to make very simple custom emojis. And we're going to do a screen grab of what we come up with there. But that's not all. So in this demo, this is what I came up with using the built-in options from this site, the Emoji Maker site. Take a screen grab of it, then we bring that into Photopea. And then we're going to learn how to make those simple shapes using the vector shape tools in Photopea, same as in Photoshop, and how those layers are different than regular raster layers. And we're going to start using uh, layer styles and effects. And then this is what I came up with which isn't exactly like the one I got, right? And in some ways, I liked it more. In some ways, I thought it was limited. And then for the extra finishings, we're going to talk about, you know, additional shapes and then additional effects because emojis now are pretty complex. They have shading, they have texture. And so with adding all of that, you know, I was able to get a little bit more character out of it. Okay. If you want to see past student examples, again, true for all of our projects, you can use our links page to get the, the sign-in for, for our private Imgur portfolios. And then once you're in there, if it is cooperating and the server load isn't too much, <laughs> You will see past examples. Come now. We'll let that load. But that is just um, for your reference. And I have my past examples as well. And then I'm going to be demonstrating, you know, a new emoji that I make for the hate you give through these videos that will be posted to the class YouTube. So to get started, go ahead and click on Emoji Maker. Know the title of the book you want to do an emoji for. And we'll start playing with it. Do, 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 do. Okay, so that direct link 
of Imgur at the bottom of each exercise and assignment, that takes you to where you will post them for your final semester portfolio. If you really made this project into something you loved and you wanted it as part of your final portfolio, you would use that link to post it. But that also gets you into our, our class Imgur account. So this is one I did last semester for Lord of the Rings. This was the Emoji Maker one I made. And then this was uh, the finished one with special effects. Kind of a, a goblin from the Lord of the Rings series or an orc. But then you can also click, once you're logged in, it's in LC Arts Lab, just on all the posts. And you'll see not just my demo from last semester, but if we scroll down into the Digital Art 1 past examples, we can see them past student examples as well. This one was for the color purple. This one was for the Great Gatsby. This one was not for the Hate You Give, but I forget which one it was for. This one's for Lord of the Flies. This one was for the Glass Slipper, I want to say. This one was for the Handmaid's Tale. thought that was pretty effective. And then before we were remote, what we did with this assignment was we chose um, an artwork by an illustrator we admired, and then we used vector shape tools to recreate it. So it's the same skill set. We'll be learning the same things. We're just building emojis instead of doing shape-based compositions off of, of artwork we admire. So all of this is just with vector tools, and it shows you the capability of it. And like always, some students really go above and beyond. And then if you keep scrolling, you know, there's lots of videos in YouTube about it. You'll find my past instructor examples as well. But I, I kind of put it together like this. This is kind of a clean graphic design portfolio way of showing process. This is what was made in Emoji Maker. This was the simple reproduction of it that I was able to do in PhotoP using the vector tools. This is how I augmented it by adding new shapes. And then this is how I, I finished it off using some of the layer styles and effects. Same thing here. This was actually the one created in Emoji Maker. This was the flat recreation in PhotoP. This was uh, this is an image showing you actually all of the vector outlines, because vectors are different than raster shapes. And th then this was the finished render. And then some recreations of artwork, you know, as past examples. And so there's videos for all of this in our YouTube. Uh, should you want to push yourself and take these skills even further. And these were all students that, that thought this project was good enough for their final portfolio. So that's not always true, right? But in some ways, this project can really open your eyes to a potential of digital art that might be new to you. So how do we get started? Well, I'm going to do the hate you give again. But I'm not going to focus on what I focused on last time, which was kind of the victims of the book. I'm going to focus on the aggressors in the book. You know, the it's a, a book that's very critical of police violence against unarmed black men and, and the outrage that causes in their communities. So we're going to I'm going to talk a little bit about those that cause the violence in this. So how do we start? Well, the first thing you can do once you open the program. It will give you a random emoji to start with, and you can click through random and just see some of these randomly generated ones using their tools. And maybe there's one that sparks your interest, and then you can start modifying from there. That's cute. Cartman in love. But that's kind of a Hail Mary, right? Expecting just random generation to get you started. Or you can just click on the trash can and start fresh, right? So it's a pretty basic tool. It's like paper dolls. You're going to pick a base layer. It's like we're making South Park characters out of paper. But I don't want the yellow dot. For me, I'm going to go right for the, the skull shape, right? I want menace to be right away. 
Now this is the only option in Emoji Maker that you can only choose one of. Right, so choose your base, then you go into different features, and for these you can apply multiples. So I can try different eyes, right? But then I can turn them on or off just by clicking on them. And if they're turned on, you'll see they're dark gray. And I don't want a goofy looking skull. I don't want an alien looking skull. I want something angry looking, right? So I have that option. I have this option. And it's kind of interesting to see them layered together. Even if it's not perfect, right? This would be good inspiration for what we recreate for ourselves in PhotoP. So I think I might try those two layered together. Um, there are more options than might appear on your screen. So scroll through. There are lots of options, especially for the eyes. And layering them up can sometimes give you some interesting effects, right? Because they're different colors. And just like what we were talking about with compositing, and one of the strengths of compositing is sometimes it's nice to start with too much and then edit away. So I kind of like that, you know, but I can always turn it off later. And always approach this with a sense of play. You know, it's good to play in your creativity. So now I can do the mouth. I can always return to the eyes, but I'm thinking menace. So that's a pretty menacing mouth. Is there anything more menacing than that? That's pretty menacing, but I used that already last semester. I don't want it to look like a happy menace. And then you can try layering up some other things, right? What you don't have the option of is moving these features around like you would in AutoDraw. So instead, you're limited to where they place things. Are we allowed to like move them around in the, like uh, when we're in photo, photo P yes, or? Yes, in our own okay. recreation, we get to tweak it and make it what we want. This just gives us a nice kind of starting idea. And you can make it kind of complicated or you can make it pretty simple. Uh, also when you're layering, it matters what order you click them in. So because I click this last, it appears on top of everything. But if I click this and put it on top, then you'll see the reds behind and, and the brown is behind. So maybe I want the brown behind, but I want the red that's darkened on top again. Okay. And it doesn't seem to be a limit of how many you can use, all except for your base. And some of them are kind of, you know, it's kind of silly and require a lot of shapes, but might work for you. All right, now we, I'm going to go to the special kind of attributes, the accessories. And these will layer on top of everything else. I like that that starts to make it look a little bit more like a skull. And then I might decide to go back to the the mouth options and turn off that brown one. Yeah, that looks a little more menacing. But I might tighten that shape up so it doesn't look too cute. I'm kind of curious what that will do. Because I need something that kind of works as 